This video will provide a brief introduction on how to create a basic flowchart using Microsoft Visio. Once you open Microsoft Visio, click on the basic flowchart icon. You will then want to make sure the US units radio button is selected and then click on create. You are now ready to create your flowchart. When creating a flowchart, the oval represents the start or end position of the flowchart. Drag an oval to your form and let go. Then double click on the image and type in the word start. If you ever want to increase the size of your image so you can see the text better, come down to the bottom right hand corner of your screen and zoom in. You might have to scroll back up on your image to see it though. Let's create a flowchart that allows us to do a loop or a repetition for a certain number of times. What I can do is drop a rectangle on the screen. The rectangle represents a process or you are going to do some work. In order to do a loop, you have to keep track of something. It's like having a little piece of paper and a pencil and making little tick marks on the paper to keep track of a count. The way we do that in programming is through the use of a variable. The word variable itself means that it can change. So we want to create a variable and initialize it to a starting value. I drop a process on the screen, I double click on it, and I can now create a variable. Create variable I count. Press the enter key a couple of times, and then we can even say I count is equal to zero. That process now says that within our program somewhere when we write the code, we need to create a variable and initialize the count to zero. Now that might seem to work pretty well, but we need to start thinking ahead. And the more practice you have creating flowcharts and writing software, the more you will be able to decide what you need to do before you actually do it. For instance, I know that I want to create a loop. And if I want to do this loop multiple times, I really don't want to create the variable multiple times. I will only want to reset the counter to zero. So maybe it's best to actually split those two processes up into two rectangle boxes. So what I could do is come back, double click, get rid of my initialization, and maybe where I say create bar I count, I could even be more um, vague and just say create variables. Create variables. Then I could create another process below that, and in that process, I count is equal to zero. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and do something where I can make a loop. For instance, if I wanted to eat 10 pieces of spam, then I would have to ask myself what number of piece of spam am I on or have I eaten all 10 pieces yet. In order to make a decision, we use the diamond symbol and you double click on it and we could say something like if I count is less than 10. Now, do we really need to say the word if in there? The decision itself, or the diamond, says you're going to ask a question. So we could leave that part off to make our code a little bit more simpler, or the flowchart more simpler, and say I count less than 10. When you do a diamond, you have two branches that come out of it, a true and a false, or a yes and a no. So if we look at our flowchart, logically would say Okay, we're going to start with eating zero pieces. That's our I count equals zero. Then we're going to say, have we eaten 10 pieces of spam yet? No, I haven't. So I need to do some work. I'll drop a process on here, double click on it, and I'll say eat spam. And once you eat spam, then you need to actually increase your counter. So I need another process on there. And I could now say, 
drag it over here, double click on it, and I'll say I count is equal to I count plus one. That now keeps track of how many pieces of spam you want to eat. The first time through, I count's equal to zero, so we say, hey, is I count less than 10? Yes, it is. We'll need to label this in just a minute. Then we want to eat a piece of spam and add one to a counter. Now we can look at the other side of the diamond and say, hey, if I count really is 10 or greater, and the reason I say 10 is because this is less than, not less than equal, then I could come over here, drop another process, and I've eaten all 10 of my pieces of spam, and so I can now go to school happy. The last thing you need to do in your flowchart is you'll need to end. So you drop another symbol in there, the oval, double click on it, and we can say stop. You can say stop and quit whatever you want to do, indicating that the flowchart is over. Now there's our flowchart. There's only one problem. We need to actually connect things. The way you connect symbols in a flowchart is through the connector tool. Here's the connector tool right here under the pointer tool. Click on that and then just start going to the different images and pressing and holding your left mouse button down and dragging to the next image. Next thing you need to notice is we need to label our branches. The way you do that is double click on the arrow coming off of the decision symbol, the diamond, and you can type in the value. Yes, that means yes, I count is less than 10. You could double click over here and say no, I count is not less than 10. Now if you take a look at this, so far it looks pretty good, except we don't have our loop in place. We need this process right here where we eat the piece of spam, we add one to our counter, to go back over to this diamond somehow. We just don't want to drag an arrow and try to stick it in the diamond. We could just drag it to that line and let go, but another way to do that is by using the on-page reference tool. So what I'm going to do is highlight that line. I'm going to highlight this line in between the I count, and I want to make sure that I go back to my pointer tool. That way I can drag and move symbols and then I want to scroll down over here to my different tools and there's one called the on-page reference. I'm going to drag that, put it right in between my process and the decision, go back to my connector tool, and now connect those. Now what I can do is from this process go into that on-page reference. It looks a little bit cleaner that way and that's a nice way for having one line connect back into the flow. So let's take a look at this flowchart. I'm going to shrink it a little bit so we can make sure the process works. And it says, we'll start, we create variables, I count is equal to zero, we drop through here, is I count less than 10? Yes it is, it's equal to zero. So we go to this way, go to the left. We eat a piece of spam, we increment the counter, so it's now equal to one. Come back up to the loop, drop into the decision. Is one less than ten? Yes. Eat another piece of spam. Add one to the counter. And we keep doing that. We've now eaten nine pieces of spam. We drop in. I count is equal to eight because we set it to, to zero initially. We eat another piece. It goes to nine. Add one, ten. We've eaten ten pieces of spam even though I count is equal to nine. But once again remember that's because we started at zero. We say, is 10 less than 10? No, it's not. We go to school happy. We end the program. Are we done with the flow chart yet? No. Are we done with the flow chart? No. We still need to let people know who wrote the flow chart and what does the flow chart do. What you need to do is click on the text menu item and then press and hold your left mouse button on your flow chart, let go, and now begin typing. Author. Type your name, press enter a couple of times, description, this flowchart shows us how to be happy.
and you now have a flowchart that's done. File, save. This will save your flowchart. You want to save it as a Visio drawing, so that's the first thing you do. Click Save, and then in order to turn it in on our website, I would like you to do the following. File, Save As. You can save it wherever you want to save it, but on the Save Type, I want you to scroll down and make it a PDF. Once you've made it a PDF file, you can click Save. I already had one out there and then you can upload this file through Learning Suite. Notice how it also shows you a preview of what the PDF looks like.